Okay, welcome everybody to the weekly charting analysis webinar with myself, Jasper Lawler. Got the risk warning on the screen in front of us. We're just going to zoom through that and get on with the uh, with the webinar. Now, any questions at all? You know, feel free to to fire them at me. I'm happy to make this uh, this interactive. You know, if no particular questions, you know, sit back and in, and enjoy. Um, there's a fair bit going on. We've got a, a complete rout in commodity prices taking place at the moment. That's um, that's impacting equities, and we're we're generally sort of lower in uh, in stock markets, but not too heavily. Now, this uh, this uh, for those who haven't attended before, this uh, webinar is fairly sort of charting orientated, but um, I tend to, I tend to have my uh, my view set up with the the multiple instruments, so I can see how they all tie in together, and then I'll pull up the charts. Um, just using this feature from the watch list um, where you just you say chart saved every time you uh, you alter this chart close it down it'll be ready again for next time it's just an alternative way of doing it from having multiple charts in the layout now as I mentioned um, commodities um, definitely volatile today the oil price is particularly crazy. They were down about 2%, now up in the region of 2.5%. We've seen a massive reversal. So let's dig straight into that uh, while we're at it. So you can see here that uh, this is a this is a four-hour chart I pulled up for Brent. We had, um, you know, so we're in a downtrend. We had a consolidation. And uh, with this rise, potential rising trend line here, which I had drawn through here, um, honestly, in the expectation of a down break, that would be my assumption from based on this pattern. Not really a bottoming pattern, more of a sort of continuation. Um, but perhaps did spread on a bit too long um, for it to be a sort of decent triangle breakout. And we had a false break up, uh, false break to the top side here. Went down perfectly, tested this uh, rising trend line, and now we're seeing quite a massive, massive breakout. And um, and so we're moving right back into this sort of 45 type vicinity on uh, on our cash on our cash contract for Brent. Differs slightly from the front month futures contract as a by the by. Um, it's just adjusted for for interest rates slightly. Now, if you're wondering what that big chunky line going through around the 45 region is, it is that low on the cash co on the cash pro uh, contract from back in January. So that that sort of played its its role. This whole consolidation area in January has sort of played its role into why these consolidation areas were taking place. And uh, obviously, this this breakout that we're seeing today does come just ahead of the the August 24th lows. I should mention it. You know, um, it, it is tricky sometimes when you're doing um, charting on the the. You know the futures contracts um, via the cash products because you'll notice that if you flip over to the the January contract, um, you know you look at the the chart for that uh, with Brent, then you'll see that actually we've gone through the August 24 lows already, and actually this the way that chart looks like is this consolidation is taking place almost kind of down here. Nonetheless, you can see that this actually holding is holding pretty well as support um, this, this cash uh, contract, and we're we're breaking through this resistance area now. If we get a close, to my mind, if we get a close above this kind of area, which you can see better on this four-hour chart, you know that opens up uh, this potential as a, as a decent, uh, decent bottoming pattern, and uh, the logical place would be this collection of lows, which actually maybe you can see better on the daily chart, which I've kind of put the extreme low as here. Just you know this, uh, this essentially the, the 15th of September. And the October 27th lows, but it's it's kind of it's more like a region, it's more like a zone, as it often is when it comes to support and resistance. And um, so I think into there, you know, we may start to struggle again, and we may get, the bounce may get capped. But I think judging on this, we can close above the levels that I mentioned, this uh, sort of 44.30 uh, type vicinity. Then, you know, I think we're in for a rebound. A larger rebound, obviously. Mm -hmm. Now, why is this all taking place? Well, <coughs> um, we obviously, had the, we had the euro weakness um, put out by um, Mario Draghi in his speech on on Friday, basically saying, uh, you know, saying something along the lines of, 
what he said last time when he said they'll do what it takes. Um, do what it takes. Last time was meant to rescue the euro as it was diving. This time, you know, let's do what they, uh, you know, do what as much as they need to do or something along those lines to to fight inflation, uh, which generally means easier monetary policy, and so actually a lower euro. So the euro got pummeled on Friday. That was in some dollar strength. Then what we also got on Friday, which was not fully priced in and has to some extent been priced in uh, this uh, this morning is that the, the Federal Reserve have announced a um, sort of uh, unexpected meeting for today. Um, and so they're not going to be changing the benchmark interest rates today, but they are going to be reviewing the discount and forward rates. Um, as uh, So just basically, they are reviewing some of their interest rates. So obviously, you know, the natural conclusion would be if they, if they hike some of their other, other rates that they influence, um, good chance that they're going to follow through and hike rates in December as well. Markets pricing, you know, if you look at Fed funds futures, about a 70% chance of uh, the Fed raising in, in December. I think were they to uh, change these internal rates today, um, then I think, you know, that, that that's probably going to increase a, a substantial amount more into the 80 plus region and, just, and make it December an almost certainty. Um, obviously, it depends a lot on the economic data. Uh, one thing will be a growth. Uh, we've got uh, US GDP. Um, it's the second iteration of third quarter GDP being reported tomorrow. And um, it's looking like a bit of a gangbuster. It was 1.5% quarter on quarter. Now it's looking like 2%. Um, which is pretty huge. You know, you compare that to the UK, which was the fastest growing economy in the G7, growing at a slightly paltry 0.5%. Um, that the, the latest second uh, iteration of the UK GDP is expected on Friday. So, you know, we've had a look at oil prices here. I mean, basically, the, the reason I mentioned all that, a bit more of a currency story, if anything, but it's that dollar strength that is uh, that's been hurting commodities. Now we're getting a bit of a rebound here. From best I can tell, it's a um, more of a sort of short squeeze off these lows. Um, obviously, if we look at WTI, uh, the West Texas uh, crude oil, West Texas, as we trade it, um, it's basically looking like a false break below 40. So if I zoom in here to more like a four-hour chart, and I'd highlighted this triangle on Friday. We've got the breakdown, pushed below, for, broke below 40, uh, but then came into this, um, what I'd highlighted here is the kind of breakout zone that took place in August, that it's found some sort of support in that kind of region. And um, if again, if it closes as it is, looking like a pretty solid uh, reversal, which, um, you know, which I think could catapult prices a good amount higher. Similar sort of resistance, though, to bear in mind, First one would just be from the um, from the low in October, but then you'd also um, start to look at the uh, the lows from back in August, which again is more like a sort of zone. But um, in this sort of vicinity, I would start, I would I would think from the sort of 42 to to uh, 42 and a half to 43 area um, could be tricky, which is just above this peak here. So dump, jump straight into oil just because that was one of the fastest moving um, markets today. But um, you know, worth I suppose um, looking at. We may as well just get going with um, commodities. Similar story um, with copper. Um, it's hit. Uh, you know, I hope a few of you were able to watch my weekly snapshot video from a couple of weeks ago. I think it was when I highlighted this this triangle pattern here, and we were getting a breakout. And uh, it's not, not normal that you'd get a pattern working out this easily where it's literally declined every single day. I think maybe we've got a small day of green right there on Thursday, but literally just tanked having broken from that triangle. So that's, that's, that's kind of a nice trade when it's lost, um, you know, it's going to have lost two and a half handles, close to three handles um, from the breakout without even any sort of chance of, you know, moving back above the trend line and having you all worried um, just tanked almost straight to the objective. And I had mentioned when I first, um, uh, yeah, so back on the 17th, plunging towards 200, uh, 210 offered some minimal support, but barely. 
Um, it was, it's kind of uh, what the point is. It, it's hit the round number of 200. So if you know, admittedly, the target's 197, but um, you know, I think you're at this point with it's sort of falling off a cliff in a down move like that, you'd be pretty comfortable taking profits. Anyone who was short in the uh, from the breakout area um, in the 200 vicinity, because there's a risk it just doesn't quite make that next two and a half uh, points. But uh, you know the um, you know it's all, with all these quantities, it's it's just well known factors. It's just that supply is outstripping demand. We've got China slowing down. Economic data in China looking generally pretty weak. Um, you know even the government have lowered their forecasts quite substantially, and many believe their um, the actual GDP stats are a little dubious as well. Probably a bit inflated. So China's economy is slowing. Um, and then on the supply side, we heard from Antofagasta and um, some of the other large uh, Chilean producers that um, they're favoring cost cuts in the company rather than cutting back output. So again, they're putting out supply, but uh, there's not quite enough demand for it. So that's a, that's a downward pressure on prices. Technically, of course, we're massively oversold now in copper. So if we pull out to our weekly chart, you know, we can see we're in the oversold territory, uh, which was what last time um, Produced a, a, you know at least a bit of a bounce, not much. But uh, you know how many times, you know, did, can we get into oversold? Uh, you know every time we like so, somewhat recovering from an oversold territory, we get a, a modest bounce. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a downtrend. Um, so generally in these kind of oversold scenarios, what you look towards is more sort of. Uh, taking profits off the table rather than going along. Uh, you know, you can go along in the short term. You know, if you sort of look at this long-term oversold condition on a weekly chart, um, you can then obviously dive down to your, uh, you know, your four hourly and your hourly charts and think, well, actually, you know, maybe I can start looking for some breakouts higher because I'm expecting this oversold condition to play out. But just with the same sort of objectives you typically have on a four hourly or hourly chart. Um, rather than the sort of weekly chart, you're know, expecting prices to get all the way back to the top of the pattern. It's a bit early for that. Um, so gold and silver are both hit uh, fresh multi-year lows recently. Um, gold, we can see, I think it was on Friday, that it hit the uh, five-year low. And so uh, we're getting a bit of a reaction off there. Uh, we've dropped down in the last couple of days since. Um, since here we got a basically a dip to the new five-year low, and then a, you know then a sort of fake out basically a fake false break lower, a push higher, but then that hasn't really gone anywhere. We're back down here again, so we'll have to see what happens on this next attempt to push lower um, successfully. Well, we're obviously in the downtrend territory again. Another false break, you know, eyes up the possibility of a slightly more um, uh, you know, bigger chance of a uh, push higher. To me, in general, though, this this sort of expanding uh, microphone type pattern is more conducive to uh, a push lower. When it's uh, you know when it's in the when at the bo at the bottom of the market, you know, if it was at the top of the market, um, you know, you, you're kind of basically treating it as a bit of a continuation pattern. Uh, silver for those interested. You know, here's the um, the weekly chart, and you can see this down sloping trend line working out pretty nicely at this point. And you can't see it too clearly on the weekly chart, but if you dip down to the day chart, you can see that there was that um, last six-year low made in August, and here again today we've dipped through it. But um, you know, look how sharply we've dropped. Um, you know, you from obviously we've been in this oversold territory from up here. So anyone buy, you know, it's just a great example of. I mean, let's just let's just look at that for a second. <coughs> Sometimes almost good to sort of almost like print a chart like this, um, just to tell yourself, you know, don't buy just because it's oversold uh, when it's when it's a downtrend. You know, we've, got, we've just looked at that long-term declining trend line with below the 200-day moving average. Anyone buying into this oversold region? has been absolutely hammered because you know yes we're oversold but that tends to be what happens in a downtrend you know we remain oversold for a long period of time 
um, once you know after being this stretched to the downside um, once we get out of oversold territory again you know then maybe a slightly different matter again that sort of scenario where you can start looking perhaps for shorter term breakouts and um, just be you know cognizant of the idea that we're still in that downtrend but maybe it's uh, momentum's got a bit too stretched to the downside so some short-term opportunities taking advantage of that oversold condition So I've got a question here on the um, on the industry, so I'll jump across to that. Um, question here on Hong Kong. Hong Kong today has been sort of just tracking the mainland um, a bit lower, but um, but not uh, not massively or anything. Still inside Friday's range. You can see here that the um, based based on the uh, weekly chart here. This is kind of what I uh, I think is a level that we're kind of working around at the moment is this uh, October 19th low, which did um, sort of was was um, oh sorry the, the week of October 19th uh, that was kind of what you know was there before the last leg higher in the Hong Kong X shares so we plopped straight through that down to the 9,000 level came up as resistance down sort of double bottom up to the 200 week down retesting it again and uh, a decent push higher off it so what you'd hope for is um you know uh, this rebound to continue um but you but, you know you basically can't know for sure if that's exactly what's going to take place until you touch until you break through the, the peak to my mind based on this action uh, um you know, yes, we're below the 200-week moving average, but I would say that you, you would probably need a retest somewhere in the region of these highs um, to con ju just to test the strength of the bulls um, to see if they're able to push through higher. If they're not, bears take over and we're, and we're heading lower again. So depending on the technique that you use, I mean, a bit of an obvious down-sloping trend line here um, RSI hovering in the 50 vicinity, so getting to a kind of place where it might be overcoming this little short-term downtrend to to push off this, um, you know, that's 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 that line right there. Hope that helps on the um, on Hong Kong. Um, so if we switch across to uh, the UK 100, um, had this. Uh, had this little rising trend line just drawn in since we peaked in it, peaked at it around there. We've actually had a second day since, and this is this is akin to a uh, a tweezer top. We got two highs, um, not quite at the same uh, with at the same point, but close. And obviously off this broken rising trend line, you know, looks like we could roll off from there. Although obviously, given that oil prices have staged this big turnaround. Um, you know, maybe there's not going to be quite such the worry over commodities for the rest of the session. So perhaps this is just a pause before pushing higher again. Um, we're obviously well below the 200-day uh, moving average on the UK 100, but but nonetheless we are forming these, um, you know, higher low, high high kind of better seen on the weekly chart. Um, so this, this, uh, you know, last week's hasn't been confirmed as a low yet, but you know, given the strength of the reversal, yes, it didn't take out the previous week's peaks, but that was a massive drop off the previous week, and we may almost made back all the losses just in the space of one week, um, which is quite an impressive, especially in the light of, you know, with the we obviously had the, pa the attacks in Paris, we had pretty hawkish Federal Reserve minutes, <laughs> um, which you know in. in in previous times might have really rattled markets um, they were able to look through that um, obviously got more stimulus coming from um, the ECB and um, you know, the prospect of a stronger US growth those two factors seem to be overwhelming any concerns about higher interest rates in the US particularly given the fact they're probably not going to they're probably not going to uh, raise very quickly if we're to believe what the uh, the Federal Reserve has to say on it Uh, let's have a quick look at um, Germany 30. 
Now I have highlighted here that um, you know we're, we've we've taken out the high, which I think is is a positive, and we've pushed through the 200-day moving average. So, uh, and we've also put in this double bottom, and and retested the neckline, and um, we've got that objective up here at the previous peak. So I think probably that does overall um, the overall scenario. You know, it looks fairly positive for the Germany 30, but I have just highlighted that we've got a fairly very sort of obvious looking uh, bit of bearish divergence from the RSI and price here. So momentum falling off a bit, whereas price um, may be looking a bit overextended, having just r again done that whole weekly reversal, maybe do a, maybe do a pullback from there. Now looking at US markets, um, the yeah, yeah, SPX was the one I looked at recently, but they're both look pretty similar. Um, the Dow's slightly, the US 30 is slightly higher into these peaks. What we're basically ang looking at here now is this was a sharp downturn the uh, week before last. Same as uh, same as European markets, we made up a lot of the uh, the losses. But for the the US PX, we're in this 2100 vicinity, and so it's going to be just a test of these highs. Um, again, if I jump over to the US 30 even more clear cut you know if that you know if that if we can't push through there then what we're looking at is potentially a double top uh, a topping formation you know a strong rally um, a, a bit of a large larger than unexpected larger than expected dip failure and then another dip maybe it's just a consolidation and moves higher again or maybe it rolls over you know that's kind of this Scenarios. We can't know which one of those is going to happen. Really, we obviously we can make educated guesses, but it's good to have a few sort of scenarios in your mind as to what exactly you know uh, could happen here. I mean, as I mentioned, surprisingly positive sentiment in uh, markets last week, given the backdrop. So you know, I think there's probably you know if you go fundamentally, maybe a bias higher. Um, but um, you know, technically, we've got to be aware of this um, this risk of a double top here. Uh, not to mention that the market's just a little bit um, overbought, having just dropped and rallied straight back again. So we, what we may be in for, particularly leading into the December rate decision, is another period a bit like this. Just a, just another sideways consolidation period. I it was what I suspect is is probably going to happen. Maybe a push ab above these highs. Maybe run out of steam roll down sideways is my default assumption. I'm certainly open to the idea that we could push up into new record highs, but that's not my default assumption. You know, I think this this is this is kind of um classic solid uptrend. You know, obviously this is a classic just boom downtrend. This to me is more sort of taking out some um some lows here. Um and uh but but then not, you know, not at this point, we could have rolled over and made a new low, and that would be more downtrend type territory. Obviously, we haven't done that. We've pushed back higher again. So now it's 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 basically range bound, and we need um, a close or two above that peak to kind of give us more confidence that we put, we turned into more of an uptrend. Mm -hmm. So let's have a, a quick uh, jump over to currencies now. So the euro, fell, uh, euro dollar fell to seven month lows last week. We're coming off those lows a bit today. Um, so obviously, actually today we've even made new uh, seven month lows. But again, we're kind of coming off them a bit, and you can see that the you know it's all a bit dollar related. Um, the euro, in a way, is acting kind of similar to the commodities. Uh, you know, both of which um, have the, the dollar. As their uh, denominator, mm. so clear, clear-cut downtrend. But what I'd look for here is, you know, just like we had in this low, uh, hold on. So just like we had this sort of consolidation here, but then eventually we did close below it, push below. Mm. What we're kind of looking for is a similar thing down here. And at the moment, uh, we're not getting the close below that we need, suggesting that we're going to get a little push higher. Mm. And it's 
that tells us a little push higher, but then we kind of, uh, there's no particularly good trend line here to be on. I don't even know why I'm drawing this. Oh, that, that's one I had in mind. Um, you know, and then maybe a close through this little trend line here could tell us that actually this um, very bearish trend has been in place. I think the top here was the, um, it must have been the Fed meeting. And then I think the jobs report came not long after. So then, that you know that could suggest that we're getting all pushed through, but I can't fundamentally really see the justification for that. Data-wise, this week we've had PMIs today from Europe, which were actually, which were actually better than expected, partially explaining the, the kind of positive euro today. Uh, we've got German IFO tomorrow. Um, on the on the dollar side, we've got durable goods on Wednesday. You know, they've been pretty pretty weak recently, but we're expecting a bit of a turnaround there. So, you know, turnaround there plus strong growth plus the hawkish Fed um, and a surprise meeting today with potentially rising um, other rates, um, all pretty bullish dollar stuff. So hard to fundamentally justify um, buying the euro, but technically you could see why it would be a bit overdone and maybe a little trend break if we get above there. Pounds getting clobbered today, um, has been for the last couple of days. <coughs> so you can see kind of what's what's transgressing here is that we were in this, or basically we're in still in this uh, massive consolidation. During this period, it was kind of more like a kind of rising consolidation. Now it's become there isn't really a good trend line to draw here, but you can see that kind of generally it's it's turned into this where it's more like a decline and we were making lower lows, but it's still kind of within that broader range. And so what we're, what we're going to test for here is I think we've taken out this low. I think from here, naturally, we would go to test the lows uh, from November 6th, and then that will be the big test um, as to whether we can substantially get through it. You know, what's been happening recently is we get a couple of little breaks through the lows and then just round off again. Um, and make a slightly lower high. So is that what we're going to expect this time? Potentially, I would say there's a good chance of that, yes, because um, if you look at this, these peaks from, uh, from back in March, they all come in just around the sort of 150 mark, which is obviously a big round number that people will be paying attention to and maybe have some big orders resting on. Um, coming into the last couple of minutes here, any questions feel free to fire them through. I've got, uh, got a question on wheat. Yep, I'll be happy to cover that uh, once we've got through the currencies. So this is dollar yen. Definitely a tricky one to have been trading recently. We had the, had the range, we had the breakout, um, but now we're running into potentially a bit of um, RSI uh, negative, uh, uh, RSI uh, bearish uh, Triple over my words here. Um, divergence, not a reversal. With RSI, it's always a bit tricky. Always uh, <laughs> a possibility for tripping over your words because you have the positive and negative reversal in RSI, uh, but then you also have the uh, bullish and bearish divergence. So <laughs> always possibility for tripping up on those ones. What we're looking up here is the divergence scenario, uh, a bearish one where price has made a marginally higher high. If we zoom in a bit, we can kind of see more precisely what's been going on we can see that um, there was the peak, tiny fake out, and then big drop through. And then RSI, in fact, didn't, you know, hasn't really reflected that push higher, because obviously the RSI probably was higher than that during the period, but then by the time the period closes, RSI is lower. So that's, why, that's kind of why it is. And so we're seeing a little top and a push through the low here, possibly indicating that this low in price is going to take taken out too. Um, nonetheless, <coughs> that's just something to be savvy to. Uh, the trend is still still higher, though. Just something, an extra reason to believe it might be um, playing out this RSI divergence is this this rising trend line, which uh, the price has struggled with every time it's it's run into it. And obviously, the the major thing that would cause the the breakout here is if. Um, the Bank of Japan was to do mon more monetary stimulus, although there is some talk of uh, more fiscal stimulus, which 
I would say perhaps if they were to do fiscal stimulus, um, tax breaks and rising the minimum wage and things like that have been mentioned, uh, if they were to do that, it sort of suggests an unwillingness to do more monetary easing. And so I think that could actually be a bit of a catalyst for, for yen to strengthen. So look out for that if there's more Japan fiscal stimulus. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's about it for the, uh, the, the regular session here. I'm going to stop the recording. Um, and so it'll be available to watch later on through the platform. I'll put a link up on Insights. Um, FYI, something I didn't mention, if you're a big trader of the, the US stocks, you probably might be aware already, but it's Thanksgiving on Thursday. Uh, so US markets are closed on Thursday, probably going to mean a fairly quiet session in Europe for trading as well. So if you're thinking of taking any day off this week, probably Thursday will be the one to do. Uh, and then on Friday, we've got a half day in the US. So not going to heavily influence European trading because there'll still be something going on in the morning. But you know, you've got to imagine there'll be a lot of big US investors who are just um, out of the office and are not making investment decisions. So it probably means uh, markets will be quieter. Um, even spreading into Europe.